Hello everyone, it's 10 Types, and today I want to look at the meta, specifically the top decks, and talk about how, uh, like, their biggest weaknesses and what they are. Obviously, all these decks are very good, but at the same time, they, they do have issues. There's a reason they're not just completely dominating every other deck, but we're going to talk about that today. Uh, and I'm talking about the decks, I guess I was, I was going to talk about the top 10. I was going to talk about all the decks above other, but then Great Test Mill is now below it. Uh, Great Test Mill, anything I talk about with that is going to apply to Ancient Box as well, to be honest. So, which is kind of weird. They're different decks in terms of... Um, you know, their win conditions, right? Great Dust Mill is a mill deck trying to deck your opponent out, versus Ancient Box is, you know, a regular attacking deck. But they're actually very similar. And I guess to look at the lower decks, so we get Guard Roar, Goldengo, Pidgeot Control, Roaring Moon, Dalgon Matang, Raging Bolt, Sandy Shocks, and then Future Box is lumped in with Future Hands in my in my mind. But, um, so the issue with a lot of these decks is just consistency or power, right? Uh, any deck that's not super played is most likely a inconsistent uh, usually sometimes it could be lack of power but usually it's inconsistency uh, not that these decks are bad but there's a yeah as i said there's a reason they're not played as much as these other decks some of them are really hard to play as well i, I guess i don't know like pidgeot control is kind of hard and like this lost on charizard which is i believe radiant charizard not charizard ex it is also a little difficult to play but i mean they're not that bad but then like dialga matang is very inconsistent same thing with roaring moon um anyways so then the top 10 or top 9 now ancient box i'll pull up lists so i'll pull up matchups first um it has a lot of not so good matchups the biggest issue is that it uh it struggles to one-shot Pokemon. So taking a look at uh, taking a look at the list here, uh, it has a very like little engine as well. So it's kind of not so good against disruption. But the bigger issue is it just doesn't hit hard enough. Uh, it it's okay, but it's always going to get one-shotted. I guess if your opponent can't one-shot you, it's it's good. But uh, most decks can, and uh, I don't know. You're just going to kind of die. It's it, it doesn't end very well. Because it just doesn't have the speed in the early game to fully get there to take these one shots, and then by the late game you're just down, and then as I said you're vulnerable to disruption. So that's kind of two things. I'd say the bigger thing is speed, but if you want to say the biggest issue is just uh, being vulnerable to disruption, I also would get that. Um, yeah, and also yeah, I just don't think the deck's super consistent. I've never been a massive fan of this deck. I think it's a solid deck. I don't think it's an amazing deck, but I don't think it's a terrible deck. But yeah, it just doesn't have the early game pressure. Except we have Snorlax Stall or Snorlax Control or whatever. Uh, and the biggest issue with this deck is it's a it's a classic control deck. It, or it's not exactly a classic control deck, but it kind of is. And that it doesn't set up very fast. And you'll just kind of whiff set up sometimes. And your opponent might just set up and then you can't do anything if your start isn't quite right. It usually takes you a few turns to get going. And... Yeah, especially if your opponent is running switches, uh, like a good chunk of them, like Lost Zone, then uh, it's not looking too great for you. There are counters to those things, but uh, they're not great. So, yeah, you will struggle if your opponent is able to just get rolling quickly and has lots of switches, and they'll just kind of beat you. There are certain counters to the deck as well, but the biggest issue is definitely... Uh, I actually made a video, I might have been yesterday, I don't think it was yesterday, but uh, about how to beat control with every deck, and uh, pretty much what I was saying is play lots of switches, play Professor Toast scenario, actually, or Penny, and then uh, Team Yells Cheer, and then you pretty much can't lose to control. So if your opponent has lots of switches um, in either supporters or uh, items, but especially supporters, then you will probably lose. Next up, we have good old Arceus Giratina. Uh, I am honestly, this deck's like doing pretty well. It's not insane, but it's doing better than I think a lot of people expected. It's only behind, um, winners are a little hard because there's like a lot of ties, so it's hard to actually judge them super accurately, but it's it looks like it's just behind the two Lost Zone decks in terms of win rate. And, um, yeah, Arceus Giratina, the big issue is it just doesn't have that, like, turn one slash, or slash turn two big damage potential. So if your opponent is one-shotting you every turn of the game, like with the Roaring Moon or something, there's not too much you can do about that because you just don't have that burst damage. Uh, I guess Roaring Moon, there's some other stuff going on because they do damage themselves a lot, but 
you're not one shotting ex you're you're not one shotting SG any multi prizers until you have Giratina V Star set up or an illist like this Aerodactyl V Star I guess but um, yeah you will not be one shotting stuff turn to you do have max from belt and choice belt and stuff like that and like lost vacuum so you might be able to get there but a lot of the time you can't if your opponents are running uh, some pokemon like i don't know if they're running like Regilucky lucky v max you're just not one shotting that ever either or you could with like choice belt with giratina but it's a bit of work and like charizard ex is hard to one shot you can use maximum belt plus giratina v star but again these are like once per game things so you are kind of relying again on your healing but if they're one shotting you that's not really doing anything so and you don't have a lot of healing anyway so pretty it it, it kind of struggles i guess you do have iron leaves to counter charizard but again that's another once per game thing so having to one shot these big Pokemon isn't something that our kids really cut out to do, and your other Pokemon they can do it, but it does take at least one turn of setup, so you may fall behind in the early game and never be able to recover. You're reliant on let's say judging your opponent and Ionoing your opponent to lower hand sizes, but that's not super consistent, especially with decks against like Charizard, they have Pidgeot and they might also have a barrel. I guess they might be running for barrel instead of Pidgeot, but that's pretty rare right now. Um and so, yeah, you're going to, like, I don't know them, and then they're going to search out the boss's orders for a game or something like that. So it struggles against um, decks that just set up. In terms of matchups, I guess I haven't been showing that for most of the decks, but, um, yeah, it's okay. it's pretty decent against Charizard, but they definitely have things they can do, and, and Iron Leaves is carrying a lot of the weight. Um, and then you see, like, Chimpao, you're not one-shotting, and that just always one-shotting you. Charizard also doesn't always one-shot you, which means that it's not as big of a deal, but, like, next so one-shotting you aren't good. Uh, this future hand stack, you're not one-shotting them. So, like, decks that are more consistent, that also just... I, I, yeah, no, I don't know. It's, um... I, I mean, the future hand isn't, like, a, isn't a great matchup for them, but it still is, like... You know, it, it, there's a lot of stuff going on that... That I just can't keep up with. Uh, or, yeah, I sorry, I woke up. I my brain's tired. Um, I saw like Archeops and I got confused. But yeah, Lugia Archeops, they're also one shotting you. So if you're getting one shotted, that's not good. Um, die single prizer. And uh, Lost Zone, you know, Lost Zone's just a good deck, right? So um, yeah, you have some like decent matchups. You have some like bad matchups. And so the idea, like against Iron Hands, you can kind of Iron them late game or something, but Against a lot of decks, you just don't have you don't have it much early game, and that's the big issue with this deck. As I said, relying on Judge I don't know late game. That's honestly something I don't like to do very often, especially with no path to the beacon format, because a lot of decks can kind of get around it. And yeah, reading guard was also not saving you from too much. Next up, we have the two lost on decks. I'm just going to group these together. Uh, I honestly don't know exactly what to say about them. They're both very good decks. Um, but I'd say the issue is, like, consistency slash, like, setting up what you need to. Uh, so, obviously, uh, Giratina is more linear, but uh, it does have the ability to adapt to many things. But there are times when you're like, oh, yeah, I need Sableye. And then, or, like, you need, I need to Sableye a bunch of times. And you hit Sableye Super Odd with Kumpi. And then you're like, I can't need to do that now. So, you can get bad Lost Zoning and um, you can miss your switches. Uh, you can miss your Colossus experiments. Um, so you can either get off to a slow start or more accurately, make a bad start with having to loss on things you want. Uh, having to loss on things you want is more of an issue with uh, the loss on toolbox because it has more different things. And also, it does have Giratina V. Giratina V can attack. I guess I'll pull it up. Some of you might know, not know it's attack super well, but Abyss Seeking. I actually thought it was Abyssal Seeking, so I guess I don't know it so well. Look at the top four cards of your deck, but two new hand. The other two in the Lost Home, which is really nice. Um, and you have Shred, which hits through effects. It's good in a number of scenarios. But yeah, you can just have issues where you have to loss on stuff you need. And you don't draw things in the right order. So with Mirage Gate, you need the energies in deck, but you might also need some energies in hand. And so if their energies are in the Lost Zone or in the discard or in play, then all of a sudden you can't attack in the way you want. And some of that you can control, but some of that really is out of your control. Uh, and also the deck is vulnerable to late game disruption. I think that's another big issue. I think the disruption thing is... Um, I don't know which is a bigger deal. I think they're both pretty big deals. I guess the disruption thing is a bigger deal. In my experience, I find that, like, you'll get unlucky at times. 
but I feel like that's the case with any deck, uh, and you'll remember it more as well when, it, when you get unlucky versus when you get lucky, you usually remember the bad, unfortunately. So I do think that uh, the biggest issue is the late game disruption. That's what people talk about is the biggest issue with the deck. Um, but you also do have the issue of like that inconsistency, where if you have to loss on something, uh, you can end up in bad scenarios, especially like with all these one ups. You could definitely hit two one ofs when you try to go to the lost zone or with hit um with comfy right when you try to use flower selecting and if you're like you see reading ninja plus iron bundle well then you have to lose one of them and that doesn't feel great so you know you need to be confident with the deck you need to be a little bit you you need to be at least not unlucky right you can definitely be unlucky so say that's the biggest issue with the lost zone box deck and i'll say late game disruption is bad for giratina because um, especially with the lost impact, you're losing energy from play, so uh, you will need to, you know, reattach energy in multiple turns, presumably, and from there, you know, it, I don't know, it, it just, it can go badly, and sometimes it does go badly, sometimes it's fine, a lot of the time it's fine. Lost on Giratina is, in my opinion, arguably the best deck in the format. I haven't been playing it, I really should play it some more, but yeah. And then we got uh, Lugia Archaeops, the biggest issue with this deck. It's kind of similar for Chimp Power Charizard, but Lugia's just so powerful, it like literally beats everything, essentially. Except that it doesn't always set up. Like There are definitely times when you just don't set up, because you really can struggle to discard your Archaeopses. I've seen, you know, you can get really lucky. You, I've, I was like playing a game, and my opponent just was like had Lugia V and Mincino on the bench, and then a turn one going first, then Ultra Ball away, two Archaeopsis, and grabbed a Lugia, and I was just like, this isn't going well, but then, and they had, like, a supporter in hand, but that doesn't always happen. Like, a decent chunk of the time, you just don't have what you need. You might not be able to get two Archaeopsis in the discard, you might only get one turn two, and you might have to settle for that, or not settle for that, and just not do anything that turn. And there are, like, you know, there are things you can do, obviously, you can add more supporters and, and things like that, but I don't know. The deck just doesn't exactly have what it needs all the time. And Luminion V can search out supporters, but it can get Jack. But Jack does not get the the Pokemon in the discard, the Archaps in the discard, which is obviously not ideal for which the Archaps that you want in the discard. So you will need Ultra Ball as well, and you only have four copies. Uh, and so, you no know, Professor Burnett hurts this deck. Uh, as I said, once it's set up, Chinchino is really powerful. It just kind of one shots everything. And it's a single prizer. And it's a stage one, which is a little more awkward than a basic, but it's not that hard to set up. So, Chinchino is really, really good, as I said, when it's going. Uh, same thing with Snorlax. Snorlax is super underrated, but it's really good. It's moderately tanky. But more importantly, it's a single prizer that hits really hard for not as much energy as Chinchino. Lugia is a really solid attacker, and Archaeops is an attacker as well, which is important. Uh, one other thing is Luminion V, you can get trapped in the active, but I mean, you have jet energy. So that's somewhat niche, but yeah, the biggest issue is definitely you cannot always get Archaeops into play. Obviously, if you can, you know, you're in a really good spot, but you won't always do that, so then you will probably lose if you don't do that. And next up, we have Chin Power Excalibur, and Chin Power Excalibur is kind of similar, but it's really reliant on Vax Calibur. I think it's the biggest issue, in my opinion. The deck's pretty consistent. Uh, there are certain times when, like, you don't run a lot of supporters, so uh, you can just miss supporters completely the entire game. That is something that will happen. Uh, but you don't necessarily lose if you miss supporters the entire game either, because you can just get up your other stuff uh, without supporters if you're... I mean, I say lucky, but you don't need to be that lucky. If you're not seeing your supporters, what are you seeing? Probably the pieces that you need. So um, the biggest issue, though, is that Bex Calibur is obviously so important, and there are times when your opponent will just target it down. It's not like with other decks where if your opponent targets down your engine, Bex Calibur is not exactly an engine, but you kind of get what I mean. If you're targeting down your support Pokemon, it's not like you have your attacker in play. Because Chimp House here, or, well, you do. You have your attacker in play, Chimp House, but it doesn't have any energy on it because you just discarded all the energy. So... Bex Caliber really is something you need in play at all times. You need a Frigibax and a Bex Caliber, but then, you know, if they hit you with, like, I guess an Iono Prime Catch or whatever and knock out your Bex Caliber, then, you know, you might not have what you need. And even if they do, if you knock out, if they knock out another Bex Caliber, you know, like, what do you do, right? So, Bex, knocking out Bex Caliber is a big issue for the de deck. Obviously, it needs, um, you know, it, it does have the issue that, um, your opponent needs to like keep gusting it, and there's the potential that you're like attacking with iron hands, which does not 
need energy to be accelerated to it every single turn. But uh, if things are like a normal game where you're attacking the chimp how the main attacker, then or re even reading a ninja, then you know you do have this issue. Last, or I guess not lastly, we do have Future Hands up next. Future Hands uh, is a very straightforward deck, which is both its biggest like upside and biggest detriment. Uh, it can well okay, there is Laking Disruption. And also powering up a second attacker can be a big issue, or a third, uh, the, like a second Iron Hands. Uh, the big issue with that is that, like, if Heavy Baton gets lost vacuumed, or um, there, there are various things that can happen, then you won't necessarily set up a next another another guy. In which case, that's kind of bad for you. But outside of that, um, the deck's not very versatile at all. It's obviously all basics. You can hit through stuff, and you do have some options, but. It's not versatile, right? Um, and I think that's the big issue. In my opinion, that's the biggest issue. Um, or the setting up the second attacker. I like versatile decks, though, and this doesn't really have any versatility. All your attackers are very straightforward. Even if you are running the, quote, future box deck, all your attackers are just essentially big damage to the active, or, or decent damage to the active, even. So you'll struggle to one-chop, like Charizard. Uh, against Charizard, you do have Iron Leaves, but, you know, like, that's kind of awkward. And so you are relying on this, like, good start, potentially a bit of a rocky start by your opponent, and hitting your boss's orders and prime catches and stuff, which you obviously won't always be doing, so yeah, I do think the deck has a lot of issues. It is really good, you know, it's really good when it works and when things just go your way, but there are a lot of times when that doesn't happen as well. And lastly, it's Charizard time. Charizard, a very, very good deck, a very, like, solid deck, uh, but it is a stage 2, a double stage 2 deck, so that is not ideal. I... Don't think it cripples the deck, obviously. I mean, it's a very good deck and it's highly played, but there are definitely times when you won't set up, you know. Um, and also, Team Devolution isn't so good for you. People don't run it very much, but they can, and it's not good for you. So that is a, a thing. Oh, I guess Team Devolution's bad for Champ uh, Powerbox Caliber as well. You don't see that happen too often, but this list does run it. But yeah, you know, the Charizard is obviously... You know, really powerful, really good, all that good stuff. But, I mean, it, it doesn't, um, it also doesn't one-shot stuff. Charizard just isn't always enough, you know. And, and you won't always get it. And sometimes you have to, like, do weird sacrifices to your setup. Uh, and Charizard, you know, also being a stage 2, I mean, it just holds the deck back. Because it just doesn't have this consistency uh, element. I mean, you can't add as many techs as you want. Although, obviously, you still can tech it out a bunch. I don't know. Charizard's a really well-rounded deck, right? I, I'm struggling to find exactly what there is but it just has you could say the lack of damage right but the early game damage it's not like that bad though you can even set up radiant charizard early game uh, and then you do have like choice belt maximum belt so i i struggled to say that but you can and that's as i said i said it was it was the issue with uh, rks so you could say the same thing with charizard but you are tankier and then i, I don't love the double stage twos things can go badly with double stage twos so uh, yeah, anyway, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Tell me what you think the biggest weakness of every deck is down below in the comments. And as always, I'm excited to see you in the next video. Also, subscribe, like, all that good stuff.